What's up guys, Nick here from Nick's Reptile World, and today I want to talk to you guys about axolotls. Axolotls are scientifically known as Ambrostoma mexicanum. They are fully aquatic salamander species, and their lifespan can range from 10 to 20 years in captivity. They usually reach an average size of about 10 to 12 inches in length, and they come in many different variations of color, but uh, usually it's shades of gray, brown, green, orange, red, black, and a pinkish white. And there's even some animals that have been genetically bred to actually glow in the dark. So let's talk about the cultural significance of the axolotl. So in Aztec culture, they worshiped a god called Zolotl which was the god of lightning and fire. It was often depicted with the head structure of a dog in Aztec artwork, and this is the base for the naming of the axolotl. Where exactly do axolotls come from? Well, they come from small lakes in Mexico. Axolotls were originally found in Lake Patzcuaro, Zacapu Lagoon, Laguna Alchichica, and in 2022, the only place that they were naturally found is in Lake Xochimilco, which is full of human waste and trash, and it is not hospitable for those animals to thrive. So the likeliness of them being extinct in the wild is extremely, extremely likely. However, the pet trade has definitely saved the axolotl from extinction from the world. So let's talk about a couple of cool facts about the axolotl. So the axolotl is neotenic, and what this means is that they keep their physical characteristics from birth through adulthood. When reviewing an article from, I'm gonna butcher this, but I think it's Bjark Jensen and colleagues, experiments on axolotl hearts is one of the few experimental models that are available for the rare congenial heart diseases of double inlet left ventricle and excessive trabeculation. Using microechocardiography, researchers have been able to conclude that axolotl hearts resemble some aspects of the DILV, or the double inlet uh, valve, and ET, or the trabeculation we were talking about earlier, uh, between axolotls and humans. So basically, they have a similar structure. Although they may be a fully aquatic salamander, they can metamorphosize into a gillless land-dwelling salamander if given thyroid tissue or forced to breathe air outside of the water. Axolotls can completely regenerate organs and limbs by having bone cartilage or muscle cells degenerate back into stem cells to form new cells. So let's take a look at the image above. So we have trauma occurs, so the hand is cut off by whatever and a new layer of skin called an epidermis is being healed over that wound, so that open wound. Once that happens, this is when that bone cartilage or muscle cell breakdown occurs and they break down into those stem cells. Those stem cells then form a blastoma, which is essentially uh, the formation of that pre-cartilage of what is going to turn out to be the missing limb um, and that's essentially how their limb regeneration works. Pretty simple. Heck, they can even regrow parts of their own brain. You know, it, it is possible that humans could unlock this genetic healing ability through biogenetic research in the future, according to researchers. Female axolotls usually lay between 300 to 1,000 eggs. The eggs are usually attached to things like plants or rocks, so that they are protected from predators. In about two weeks, all the axolotl young will hatch. It's fairly common for axolotls to basically suck up small pebbles or even large pebbles to either weigh themselves down or to assist in grinding down any food waste that wasn't fully digested. Now let's get into the brass tacks. Let's talk about caring for the axolotl salamander as a pet. 
So these guys have a highly carnivorous diet and it consists mainly of worms, small fish, invertebrate, and other amphibians. Happy here eats one large earthworm every two days with an occasional supplementation in between of axolotl food pellets. Since these are a highly aquatic salamander, you will need an aquarium that holds at least 20 to 30 gallons of water. The aquarium will need to be equipped with a slow flowing, which is important for axolotls because they do not like high flow of water in their aquariums. So a slow flowing water cooling system that you can set at anywhere between like 60 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit at all times. These are cold water animals and they will perish quickly in temperatures higher than 70 degrees Fahrenheit. The tank will also benefit from a canister filter because the food and waste produced by axolotls can be quite a lot to say the least. Make sure that the water hardness is maintained at 7 to 8. For those of you who are curious as to what um, aquatic products I use for my axolotl, I personally use all of API's products. I use the stress coat to get any sort of chlorine out of the water, and I also use the um, bioactive uh, bacteria in the stress zyme to kind of keep my filter running nice and clean. Do not house axolotls together unless you are professionally trained to do so, because aggression and cannibalism are common amongst axolotls. Make sure that you have enough places for your axolotl to hide and give them enrichment items in their aquariums because they absolutely love it. These are very active animals when they want to be. When they don't, they're just little kind of couch potatoes, but uh, make sure that you keep handling at a minimum. But if you choose to do so, be careful and ensure your hands are scrub free of any oils that may be on your skin because much like with any other amphibian, Axolotls absorb nutrients through their skin. Anyways guys, that's going to be it for the video. I'm Nick from Nick's Reptile World. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.